Alright, hi guys. So welcome to another video. Today I'm shooting on the Brighton Star 7.5mm lens on the Sony A6400. Now two things that I want to just get out of the way straight away is that first of all this is a fish eye lens. Why the heck am I using a fish eye lens for a vlog, right? Second of all, it's the lack of autofocus. This lens does not have autofocus. It is a fully manual focused lens and this is why uh, I want to make this video to explain why I think that this is the best lens you could get if you're on a tight budget. If you want to find out more, please stay tuned and watch the whole video. So first of all, let me just explain why I think the fish eye isn't really an issue for me. It's because I tend to bring this image into Premiere Pro and use lens distortion to sort of correct the distorted angles that I have. Um, and with the distorted angles, I can actually choose what I want to keep in my frame compared to a lens that is not wide enough. So right now, I really have a huge wide of uh, like field of view angle of every single thing that's in this frame right now, and I could just choose to change it like this. And now this looks just like a normal vlogging sort of distance. Uh, if I want it a bit wider, I could just zoom out, or maybe I could zoom into like a more close up and intimate shot. So this is why I think that this fish eye lens sort of gives me the extra bit of reach to choose what kind of framing I want for my footages. And if you shoot this in 4K, it's definitely not an issue for you because you could just crop it in and it wouldn't lose that much of quality anyways. Okay, now because this is actually a wide angle lens, everything sort of stays in focus the entire time. So I don't find the lack of autofocus that big of an issue. So if you guys can like take a look, this is right now focused on my face and this is focusing on the back over there. So my face isn't like really, really blurred out. It's still relatively in focus. And this is because it's a wide angle fish eye lens compared to say a 50 millimeter lens where your close up subjects would have a lot of depth of field separation with the background. So having this lens is really handy because everything just generally stays sharp and there's no need to actually have autofocus on this lens as long as you use focus peaking and you sort of like have your face in the focus point. Even if I move back in front, uh, I still have my face relatively in focus. Okay, it is a really sunny day out here and I'm shooting at f22 so if you're shooting in broad daylight, you don't even have to worry about having things in focus because everything is already in focus. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about the durability and the design of this glass. Uh, it's fully constructed in metal and I love that it's very durable and you can definitely knock someone out with this. Um, I love the way it looks. There's this very nice curve to the front of the glass. It's very iconic of a fish eye sort of effect, right? It has two wheels to turn. Uh, the first one is the aperture ring, which is slightly stiffer than usual in my opinion. It's just really not a pleasant wheel to use. I don't know if it's just my copy, but I don't like turning and changing the aperture on this lens. It's just really tight. Uh, but the focus wheel is actually really amazing. It's very smooth and easy to focus with, and I like using the focus ring. Not that I actually have to use the focus ring a lot anyways. This is how the plastic uh, lens cover looks like. It's not the best material or build quality but it's just this rubbery plastic thing to just cover the lens with. Uh, another thing that I really don't like is that the metal lens hood is actually not detachable. I think this is to protect the glass from any scratches but I would like the option to at least take the lens hood out and um, use it without the lens hood but the cover actually covers the lens hood as well so the lens hood is sort of like meant to stay over there and you're not supposed to take it out. So this also means that there is no dedicated filter thread and that means you can't put your favorite ND filters or diffusion filters on this lens and this lens is just meant to be used as a naked bare bones lens. Now the image quality on this is actually not that bad. I actually like it. It's sharp but it's not over processed like a lot of other lenses out there. Um, the only thing I don't like about this lens is the sides over here. Uh, there's a lot of chromatic aberrations and noise that goes on at the sides. Um, um, whenever you shoot photos. However, if you're in Lightroom, you can actually quickly correct that and remove the chromatic aberrations. Um, it doesn't completely go away, but it's it's helpful. Uh, for me, I'm not using this as a fisheye lens at all. I'm actually using this as a vlogging lens, which means that I am going to crop out the sides by undistorting this image either way. So uh, that doesn't really bother me that much. However, I realized that my hands look really big whenever I move in and out because of the distortion that this lens creates. So even if I use lens distortion and sort of correct the distortion, my hands still look relatively big 
in this video. Alright, this is F22 and this is all the way down to F2.8. With the ability to stop down all the way to 2.8, I find this lens to be an absolutely amazing lens to vlog with in low light. Now, for where to get this lens and the price of this lens, I actually got it off of AliExpress for like $150. Uh, AliExpress is a great platform for cheap gear, so you guys could check that out if you want to. They don't actually have it anymore. They actually have a 12mm version right now, not the 7.5 one that I'm actually reviewing right now. However, if you really want this 7.5 Brighton Star lens, you can actually buy it on eBay. It costs around like $130. US dollars. Uh, the 12mm is actually a little bit less distorted, so if you guys want the wide-angle look without the fish eye, lens effect you guys can actually opt for the 12 millimeter one now since we're on the topic of lenses i actually want to talk about its competitors i know that um one of the best lenses for a sony APS-C camera is actually the sigma 16 millimeter lens f1.4 i was actually contemplating between buying that and this um but buying this saved me about a th but like 300 dollars the 16 millimeter is just not wide enough for me and it is not close up enough for me i can't get nice close-up shots because of the distortion that it creates when i'm trying to shoot depth of field shots but when i want to shoot a really wide shot it is still not wide enough for me to shoot what i want this lens gives me freedom to choose to keep what i want in my frame and it just gives me more creative freedom and i i, I like that with that being said, it sums up everything I want to say about this fish eye Brighton Star 7.5mm lens over here. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If this helped you in any way, shape or form, do leave a like for me and subscribe to my channel. And with that being said, I will see you guys in the next video.